Hello community! The next videos will cope with jacks, flags, and we do this that we are able to execute T5X, a large language model that are really, really fast to execute. We want speed improvement. So how do we start JAX? One of the reasons that JAX can pack so much power into a small software package, it starts with a familiar programming interface, and this is just Python, Python with NumPy. There's no TensorFlow, there's no PyTorch, nothing. This is our third framework, if you want, and it uses the actual Python interpreter to do most of the heavy lifting to distill the essence of the computation into a simple expression language with some limited higher order feature. And this expression language is called JAX expression language. You're not gonna believe this. Now, an interpreter, just to make sure, is a program that converts the code that developer writes that you write into an intermediate language. In Python, we call it the bytecode. And what is so beautiful about this JAX expression language, it represents the actual computation content of the function. And you see here, function is the main term that you have to focus here, please. Because this JAX expression is a structured and can be evaluated like a mini functional programming language. And thus our JAX parts are the useful intermediate representation for function transformation. So we're gonna with function transformation. And yes, you're absolutely right. We have Python functions and applying JAX and please think about JAX as JAX transformation. These two words go together, JAX transformation on, for example, Python function into a small well-behaved intermediate form that is then interpreted with transformation specific interpretation rules. So JAX is some beautiful, functional approach. Function, a function relates an input to an output. Y equal f of x. Beautiful, simple, easy. Now, if you want to see this on action, easy. There's a code example. You have defined a function, the function one, first and second, and you say the temperature is first plus. Then here we have checks numpy. We call it gnp. And you record and you calculate the sinus function of the second parameter times three, and you give back the reduced sum. So if you want to see now here the Jax expression, it's easy. You just say print make Jax expression, and you get here something we call a lambda. Forget about the lambda, but you see here the steps here, and just the calculation steps of the function, and this is here so beautiful. Now. You guessed it, I talk about Python function, JAX transformation. Yes, we are now finally in the area of functional programming. Now you might add functional programming. Yes, we are doing purely functional programming language applications. So in functional programming, and you're not gonna believe this, everything is a function. And functional programming is notable for its ability um, it was more or less invented for this to efficiently parallelize pure function. So you have a tensor processing cluster, a GPU cluster, optimal parallelization. This is what we are talking here. It's not about if you have one GPU or one CPU. Yes, JAX will run on a CPU, on a GPU, on a TPU cluster, but what it is designed for maximum parallelization in a TPU cluster. So we function the same input, like X is an input, consistently to the same result, Y. Y equal the function of X. Now a pure function, a pure functional object is deterministic and will not produce any side effect. What does this mean, not produce side effects? It will always return the same value when called, it will not modify anything outside of its scope or parameters. So you will always get the same answer y if you input the input x. Now, if you remember, we had this already when Google, 100 years ago, uh, I don't know if you remember MapReduce and Spark here on Databricks, but MapReduce was exactly this 
pure functional form. In contrast, this functional programming is more or less in contrast to what we did up until now. We had some object-oriented programming, OOP. And in this object-oriented programming, this can contain state-dependent variables, which means objects don't necessarily retain consistent values. But this is what we need for a massive parallelization. Why cannot change if I put it on the GPU 1 or the GPU 8? Why has to stay Y for the whole cluster? So we cannot go here with state-dependent variables. We cannot stick here to our object-oriented programming. But hey, mathematics is gorgeous. So we have here purely functional programming language. And you're not going to believe it's JAX. So another two terms you will encounter, stateless and stateful. You can have it in networking, you could have it uh, for, for firewall security, whatever. We're talking here in mathematics, a general definition. Stateless means there's no memory of the past. Whatever happened in the past is gone. No recording, no caching, nothing. Every transaction, every JAX transaction is performed as for the very first time. Now, stateful, on the contrary, means that there is a memory of the past and previous transaction, maybe on the same function, are remembered and may affect the current transaction. This is what you do not want if you have massive parallelization that GPU 1 is modifying your parameter Y and GPU 8 is, is modifying your parameter Y. And then if you combine them back, you have some problems. Therefore, we go with stateless. Beautiful. What else? Yeah, you would say, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. What do you want to sell us here? When we do machine learning of our neural network models, we have model parameters, we have optimizer state, and we have stateful layers. Our whole architecture is full of stateful layers. So how can we calculate this in JAX? Well, you know, this is maybe that there's a steep learning curve if you're new to JAX. This is maybe the element you might find a little bit difficult when you start. But anyway, so changing here the program state is, is, a, is a kind of a side effect. So if we can't have side effects as we defined it, JAX to be here this uh, functional language, how do we update our model parameters, up to our optimizer state, and use stateful layers in our model? Think about backpropagation and whatever we do to the weights in each layer of a transformer. Now, the answer is, of course, functional programming, and this will lead us to flags. I just want to show you we have jacks, and the next video will be about flags if we go here to neural network architecture transform architecture. Flex is a beautiful library based on JAX, optimizing the code for neural network. About a year ago, I did two videos here about Giraffe. This was JAX for graph neural networks. So if you're interested, a year old video here about graph neural networks here, Giraffe here, this is a beautiful little depiction of a Giraffe you can see here. These are the links to my video where I show you the JAX library for graph neural network. But we will focus now on neural networks here that we know and that we love. Yes, talking about Autograd and XLA compiler, you will find often here this expression. And one excellent resource to learn is HVBS JAX read to docs IO, latest notebooks quick start. There you have notebooks that run you through the most important JAX commands for your code. But if you want to understand what it is, I deviated a little bit. I don't show you here the code. You can execute here the Jupyter Notebooks yourself. I give you all the links that you need at the end. I just want that you understand what is happening. So at first, um, TensorFlow, you know, was more or less invented by Google Research, and Google Research, Research also invented here XLA. 
This is an optimizing com as a compiler for machine learning and accelerated linear algebra. And it is a domain specific compiler for linear algebra. And you know, we need a lot of mathematics and linear algebra to accelerate our tensor flow models with almost no source code changes. And when a TensorFlow program is done, all of the operations are executed individually by the TensorFlow executor. Each TensorFlow operation has a pre-compiled GPU kernel implementation that the executor dispatches to, and XLA provides an alternative mode for running this. It compiles the TensorFlow graph into a sequence of computational kernels generated specifically for the given model. Now, to be a little bit more precise, and this is what I would love that you remember from this slide, Fusion is XLA's single most important optimization. Why? Let me show you this. Let's say you have a mathematical function and you have a multiplication, you have an addition, and you have a summary reduction. Now, normally, without this optimized XLA, the TensorFlow graph launches three GPU kernels. But, and this is the beauty, XLA can optimize now our TensorFlow graph so that it computes the result in a single kernel. And it does this by fusing now the mathematical operations of addition, multiplication, and reduction into a single GPU kernel. Moreover, this fused operation does not write out the intermediate values produced now by multiplication addition and multiplication to the memory. Instead, it streams the results of these intermediate computations directly to the users while keeping them entirely in GPU registers. So this fusion is one of the reasons why XLA has such a beautiful optimization for speed. Of course, memory bandwidth is one of our scarce resources on hardware accelerators, either GPUs or TPUs. So removing memory operation is the best way to improve performance. Now you know why we do this. We have fusion to a single kernel. Okay. XLA GPU can be used with the distributed uh, strategy for TensorFlow, mirror strategy, multi-worker mirror strategy. Yes, you know this. And you know, there is this beautiful command, JIT compile is true which is more or less our kind of multi-threading. So if you annotate a function with this famous JIT compile is true command, you automatically have this. XLA takes graph, the computations, now defined in a high level operations and compiles them into machine instruction for various architectures. So this is really close here to machine code, but if you wanna have some code examples, this is the HTTPS link I would recommend to you. There are some XLA tutorials where you see the JIT compile function in operation. But just to show you, it is so easy. You have here a simple AI, and you have here, you train it on MNIST, and you have here your decorator for the TensorFlow function, and you just say JIT compile is true. So you have here your normal training function, your gradient tape, you reduce here softmax cross entropy, you lodge it, your trainable variants, the tape gradient, the optimizer, everything, and you just say here in your decorated JIT compile is true. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, as I told you, JIT only works with functional, pure functions. Yeah, this is why we're working in JAX. So, what are the most useful command? Of course, we are working here with neural network. So we have backpropagation, we have to compute gradients. And you're not gonna believe it, uh, right next to XLA to our linear algebra compiler, the auto differentiation function was one of the highlights when they established, they built JAX. So you have automatic differentiation, multiple automatic differentiation. And if you know Autograd, this old product from Google, you can compute now the gradients of our neural network here with this function, but with a speed improvement that is almost unbelievable. It is optimized for this. So 
Then we have, of course, a lot of operation. We have the dot products of two matrix structures, elements, injects, and it is faster to compute the dot products of two matrices in JAX than to compute the product of a matrix with just a vector. So we have VMAP for automatic vectorization transformed in a dot product of two matrices. We have PMAP. This parallelization mapping takes advantage of the multiple cores of our TPU, our tensor processing accelerator, or our GPU accelerator device and runs the copies of the same function on different cores with different data parallelly and combines the result. So beautiful. As you see here, optimization, gradient, multiple gradient, parallelization. Of course, we are not working in NumPy arrays anymore. We have device-specific JAX arrays that are like TensorFlow tensors, immutable. You cannot change those device arrays. And the biggest difference between, yeah, NumPy arrays and device arrays, execution, as a as dispatch, I'll show you in a second. But if you now want to learn here, if you're new to JAX and you want to have an entry, an introduction with code, there are 10 Jupyter notebooks I would recommend to you. You can have it in Colab, you can open it in Kaggle, you can have it in Binder, or you can have the pure code in GitHub. Choose whatever you like, but those 10 notebooks here, and they are also here the recommended reading stuff from Kaggle. If you see here, this is our author. And either you go to Kaggle, but I would recommend go directly to the GitHub account of the author. He done some excellent work for TensorFlow Jacks tutorials because he has in these 10 notebooks, gives you an overview of a tensor, variables, automatic differentiation, multi-differentiation, Device arrays, as I told you, number arrays and device array are a little bit different, but we can transfer one to each other in the low dimensional case. What a pure function. You have here a beautiful Colab notebook about randomization, about JIT compile, VMAP and PMAP, I told you. Then again, about automatic differentiation. And maybe the most complicated for you as a beginner will be PyTrees. But those are the 10 notebooks I would recommend. If you look at them, if you run them, if you get familiar with the instruction set, you understand a huge part of JAX and you will need to understand a huge part of JAX because our next video will be on the library that builds upon JAX and it is called Flax. And we have one use case and one use case only, neural network calculations. So whatever we have in our transformer library, now we want to do here our calculations 10 to 100 times faster. It is all about speed. You can use PyTorch, you can use TensorFlow, beautiful, monstrous programs, great. But if you are a developer and I say, I don't want to wait 200 hours for the execution of a training run, of a fine tuning, but you just want to wait two hours instead of 200 hours, this is where JAX and FLAX come in. And then, Outlook in the future, we will do T5X models. We will program them together and I will show you the speed improvements. Until then, I hope it was a little bit of a different presentation, an introduction to JAX and FLAX for T5X. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in my next video.